I'm really sad. Sometimes I just wake up. I think it's right before my period. I don't know. <laughs> but I feel things intensely. And when you do some of this personal growth work, it's a bit like eating glass at first. It's really not that comfortable. But the wonderful thing that happens is your heart feels more. You feel more of everything, though. You don't get the good without the bad, <laughs> unfortunately. So you do feel a lot. Uh, but I like living this way much better than I was before. I was rather numb before, it felt like. So this day, I woke up and I was very sad. And so on days like that, I just allow myself to be sad. And I s just sit with it and feel into it. And then it always, always shifts if I allow it to flow through into this beautiful sort of expansive place of love. And it's called Wake Up People. My heart aches, literally. I can feel it inside, expanding, contracting, expanding, contracting. My eyes have filled with tears several times today, but I have not let them fall. I'm afraid if I start, I will not stop. The sadness runs deep, and it is not all mine. <clears throat> It's a collective pain, the pain of a child dying in his mother's arms because we, the fortunate ones, can't figure out how to share our food and our wealth. It's the pain of human beings killing each other because of different belief systems, because this la land should be theirs because, well, just because. Does there have to be a reason to kill someone? I cry for the thousands of orphan children in Africa who watch their parents die from AIDS or the bullets from guns shot by their own people. I cry for the women who are raped and beaten and made to feel like nothing, worthy of nothing. I cry because the atrocities around the world and in our own backyard are the result of being disconnected from ourselves and from one another, and we don't get it. We just don't get it. If we were really truly in touch with our hearts, the infinite love we have been gifted with, we would not be able to do what we do to one another. If we truly valued ourselves, the preciousness of being alive, we would recognize the preciousness of others, and it would be impossible to hurt one another in any way, be it with weapons, silence, or turning the other cheek. We would understand that how we treat one another is how we treat ourselves, and when a child dies of starvation, a part of us dies too, because we did not nourish ourselves enough to do something. We are powerful beings, and good too, at our core, when we are in touch with our truest natures, we recognize how much we desire to do good on this planet, be of service, and bring healing to this world. We are good. We want to do good and make a difference. Then we listen to the news or have a confrontation with some stranger at the Dairy Queen, or get caught in our daily lives running here and there, round and round the gerbil wheel, looking busy but going nowhere. And we forget we are good but our hearts remember and feel the emptiness of nowhere. And in the quiet, dark moments of our lives, we ache for something more. The world is in crisis because we are in crisis. I'm not encouraged when I walk down the street or sit in a coffee shop and tune into people. Most of us are existing, putting one foot in front of the other, but not living, not really living. My question is, what is it going to take to blow us out of our small existences? What is it going to take to get us to step off the gerbil wheel, sit quietly, and listen for a while to the whisper in our hearts that kindly reminds us we can do better and live bigger? A terrorist attack that killed over 2,000 people while we watched didn't seem to work. A tsunami that wiped out hundreds didn't do it. A hurricane that devastated the American state didn't do it. An AIDS epidemic that is killing millions of people isn't doing it. Wars throughout the centuries that devastated many countries and millions of families didn't do it. We just don't seem to be getting at people. Our disconnection from our truest nature leads to self-destruction and the destruction of those around us. If we were truly tuned in, we couldn't, absolutely could not hurt one another. If we truly were in touch with our absolute divine nature, the goodness inside our hearts, our absolute yearning to love and connect with those around us, we wouldn't allow children to starve in this world, young girls to be raped and beaten, a stranger to feel lonely, or ourselves to suffer. We are not meant to suffer. 
We are not meant to live in isolation or inside the pain of silence that surrounds us and fills us whole in our busy, disconnected lives. Enough already. It's time to wake up and start living. And it starts with you. Get to know who you are, not the conditioned you, not the one created by society and other people, but the real you, the one created by something beyond what we can ever imagine or define or contain. Infinite love is what I find inside myself again and again when I sit still enough to listen. It is what I have felt in many of my meditations and in prayer with my candle burning as I speak often in desperation to the great something beyond me and inside me. Reminded of my truest nature, I once again feel full. Then I blow out my candle and walk out the front door and join the world, the many other beautiful beings of love that walk on this earth. And sometimes I see my truest nature reflected back in another and others and other times, too much of the time, I see people who are not aware of their truest nature, who robotically exist without looking up or within. The pain we experience as human beings isn't caused from our brokenness, abuse in childhood, dysfunctional relationships, betrayal, or any other excuse we use to stay small. Our pain comes from our refusal to embrace our God-given wholeness and our infinite beauty, wisdom, and love. Our world is merely a reflection of the love we hold back. We have been given the remedy to resolve all our personal issues and the issues of this world. It is within every one of us. Let go of your perceived brokenness and embrace your wholeness. Let the truest nature of who you are radiate out and watch. Watch your relationships heal. Watch strangers look up and smile back. Watch the issues of this world, everything from starvation to racism to genocide to rape to silence, dissolve and become whole. It's up to each one of us. We are all part of the solution. For me to lock my love inside while you let your love flow is not good enough. We must each participate in the rising of our consciousness, in the sharing of our truest nature, in loving one another, together, not separate, whole, never broken, not tomorrow, but now. I will let my tears fall now. I will do it because I know that underneath the sadness, my perceived brokenness is my wholeness and the love that is so desperately needed in our world. You are welcome to join me anytime.